Okay guys, so we're here at Paranella Park, just south of Cairns in Queensland. And this is my second time here, but I got to say it's still one of my favorite stops. This park was built in the early 1900s, has an absolutely beautiful story about a Spaniard coming over, working hard and building an absolute dream house, Gatsby style. I don't want to go too far into that because it will ruin the tour, but I do want to talk about the hydroelectric generator that he put in in 1933. This type of thing really interests me and I just absolutely love the concept that this person had electricity in the middle of nowhere when everyone else was having dinner by candlelight. When we got here, I was a little bit disheartened to find out they were no longer doing the hydroelectric generated tours due to COVID, but I was lucky enough that the owner, Mark, led us through into the pump house for inside viewing of the electric generator. Now he talked us through this as he went, so have a listen and check this out. Come on down. It, uh, it gets a little bit steep. And if we can close that behind us, but uh, there's no doubt we've made it a little more comfortable to walk down here through uh, just adding a, a nice smooth path here. Yeah. And it's also not a bad day to go down here because it's not raining. Yeah, I don't think any of the balustrades were even here last time, not yeah, from memory. We've certainly done a bit of replacing uh, and putting handrails in. When we uh, start doing tours again, probably not until next year. It'll, it'll be with uh, handrails that people can hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we have this wonderful waterfall here that really just, uh, you can see why Jose decided this was the place for his uh, hydroelectric system, the generator room. A building that everyone's a bit surprised that it's still here. This building mm. was uh, uh, on the edge of collapse when the 1946 flood came through. So what you had was all this debris coming down. The front piece of this was knocked off. Yeah. And that allowed Jose, having installed the system in 1933, he was able then to take out the old one and put in an AC system. So he changed yeah. it over in 1946, 47. 1946, and, yeah. uh, so the flood. You can actually see there's a bit of a line through there, and that line is this was all smashed off. Yeah. So he's put block and tackle up there, taken the old genus generator out, and bring, brought down a, an AC system. Yeah. So we'll go down the final little bit. That was the worst of the flood, too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That was a, a man-made flood in many ways. Lots of debris. So that would have come right over the top of this. Yeah. And uh, it's luck lucky the building survived. The thing that surprises most visitors when they come in here is how quiet it is. It literally sings and uh, uh, Remembering that this is basically as it was with Jose's original system, uh, except for one significant change, and that is that this building housed the hydro as it is now, plus a little black box that was uh, allowing the system to change through the governor. Yeah. So what what happened? If someone, if all of a sudden the refrigeration came on needed more power, this would read that need and yeah, allow okay. it to kick in and, yeah. and increase its uh, production. Now, we just run it flat out all the time yeah. because if there's anything left it over, gets fed back in. it goes into the grid. Yeah. So, so, so this is an original pump, but just a brand new uh, motor, yeah, essentially. Correct. That generator is a Siemens coming out from, uh, 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 from uh, Germany and uh, we'll We've, we've probably taken it out since 2009. We've, we've just taken it out on three occasions. Uh, we've now sealed this building so there's not as much moisture coming in. Before we sealed it, there was dripping water all the time and just that moisture level was huge. The humidity would have been 100% for six months. Yeah. So it was almost like drowning in water. This is the part that's sent back to the building. Yeah, exactly. 
So this pipe, this beautiful intake here, that comes from the reservoir that you would have seen up the top. Yeah. And, uh, so you get a shot of that into here. The impeller is in that section down here. Yep. The impeller had to be rebuilt. Just a little fact that uh, really is a positive. We actually advertised to just uh, the local newspaper in Townsville that we were fixing this. All of a sudden, one of the locals down there stepped up and said, I've got these drawings for you. <laughs> and those drawings were actually from uh, right. the original uh, system. This is number 149 uh, installation around the world from that English company, Bovey. So this is obviously pressure gauge. Yeah, it is. It, it doesn't play any significant part. Because it's a flow. It, yeah, flow. it's just flowing through. Uh, I assume it was being an air, air outlet? Yeah, pressure outlet. It, it, again, really just there for, for looks more than anything. And uh, Clean, just, cleaning? Yeah, cleaning. Yep. Cleaning. And cleaning again. And then yeah. this one actually changes the, the speed. The speed by so, opening the baffle. Correct, you've got it. So if you do work wind this down, it allows you to slow it down or increase the speed. And when that's necessary is say during the dry part of the year when there's not much water coming through, you wind it down so that there would not be enough water, but there's enough if you slow it down. Yeah. Let it build up. That's awesome. So there it is. So just going over what was there, you can see here we have the dam or the weir at the top of the waterfall. Then the water is fed into this square box you can see here which has a lift gate to bypass it. It then goes through this pipework over this holding tank here and then drops straight down on top of the generator itself. It's not a high pressure generator by any means, that's only high volume. I'd actually be curious to see your opinion on this generator because I think it's got a lot more capability to be putting out a lot more than 10 kilowatt. But being heritage listed now, I'm guessing not much is going to change. Here you can see the actual inverter. It's got all the lights for all the different alarms and issues. You can see it's pumping out 400 volts and it's pushing 10 kilowatt into the grid. Yes, this is now a grid tied system. The really cool thing I love about this generator is it's working 24 hours a day. So instead of the solar power that I have on my roof at home, which is also 10 kilowatt, but it's only creating 10 kilowatt over four hours a day. So 40 kilowatt, this is creating 10 kilowatt 24 hours a day. So 240 kilowatt a day. As for flow, if you think the generator is going to slow down when the flow slows down, you can see that with the weir, all the water that you can see going off the side of that waterfall is actually the excess. So the generator is picking up the water from underneath the lowest point of that waterfall. So that entire waterfall can dry up and still be coming out of the generator at 10 kilowatt. The generator will be the last thing to drop off. If you found this interesting, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching.